Good morning, friends. I've got a van trailer full of stuff behind me again. So this morning, actually all day, uh, we started at about 8 a.m., started unloading the trailer. We had to hand bomb the products off. They were all on the floor, not on skids. And uh, hand bombed them all off, and then they had a load going back into Winnipeg. I explained this yesterday, right? So we loaded that up, and that took a couple of hours. I was all hand bombed in as well. And now I'm leaving the area. There's this back road that leads to the place where I was unloading and reloading. I was hoping to be able to see more of the scenery today, but it seems pretty foggy. Hopefully we'll, uh, it'll clear up. We're in Northern Ontario, south of Kenora, about 150 kilometers south of Kenora. We're pretty close to the Minnesota border, right over there. It's an old settlement house, eh? Not much traffic out here. And there's people that live back here, eh? Way out here. The farmers out here, they cleared some of the bush here and they got land for their livestock to graze. Nothing but fog today. Not many sights to see when it's like this, but it's still better than Manitoba. I mean, look at this. <laughs> We're just going around Kenora right now on the way back. This wasn't a very long trip. It wasn't even half as long as the one we did last or uh, the weekend before last. We went to Nipawin, Saskatchewan. That was about an eight hour drive. This was about a four hour drive. The scenery is much different though. It's interesting, these guys were all doing about 70 to 80 kilometers an hour. And now that uh, we're at a passing lane, ah, suddenly they can all do the speed limit and a little bit more. Look, they're pulling away from me. <laughs> Those of you drivers who drive through uh, Northern Ontario, isn't that the most annoying thing? 
goes down to a two lane, they slow down to 80. You finally get your passing lane, suddenly they can do 120. <laughs> Every time. That's why I just let them do their thing up there and I don't like to pressure anybody. I see some guys, they get really frustrated on this stretch of road. Well, it's not a stretch, it's, it's a long, it's a two day drive between Winnipeg and uh, Toronto. And uh, some guys get really frustrated, they end up tailgating the person in front of them a little bit too much. It's easier if you just take a deep breath and now nah, we're all gonna get there. I mean, as long as it's not ridiculously slow. Eventually, especially if it's a car, if it's a four-wheeler, they've got to turn off sooner or later. I mean, they're not driving all the way to Toronto like you are. Eventually, they'll turn off and then be on your way. Back on the four-lane, that means we're closer to home. We're in Manitoba. Once we get back to the yard, I have to quickly fix my pickup truck yet. I had a bit of an issue with it right when I got there to start this trip. Uh, it seems, well, it started off with screeching in my front driver's side wheel. Just terrible, deathly screeching as I was pulling into work, right? Just as I was pulling in. So uh, a couple of my coworkers and some guys at work were looking at it and told me it's probably a pebble in my brakes. Hopefully it's just between my rotor and my, uh, the, the dust cover or rotor, rotor cover. So once I get to the yard, uh, the tire guy there, he's gonna let me use his shop and jack my truck up, take the tire off, and see if we can locate this pebble that's creating all the screeching noise. And hey, maybe we'll get lucky and it'll have just fixed itself we were, while we were on this trip. But hey, I don't wanna ask for too much, right? It's getting close, isn't it? Are you ready for Christmas? Are you prepared? Do you have your Christmas tree up? I hope so. Why not? Why wouldn't you have a Christmas tree? Everybody has a Christmas tree. It's like the biggest tradition in the history of ever. Everyone has that. Put up your Christmas tree right now, real quick. Chevy, what do you think? What do you think? Yeah, you got a scratch about it? Is this, you gotta think? You good? You want, you want some help? Oh, you want me to scratch it? Sounds like you're gonna tear your face off with those claws, man. Be careful. You got a beautiful face, man. Yeah. So, uh, the tire guy was still there when I got there. And that's why I didn't film any of this. I just got everything done as quickly as I could. Uh, one of our other guys was there as well. Uh, and uh, they all sort of gave me a hand. It turned out just to be a rock stuck between the rotor and the dust plate behind the brakes on my pickup on the driver's side steer. Thank goodness. Because uh, I don't know what I would have done. I would have had to, well, obviously I would have had to tow it in somewhere. I thought my brakes were grinding. It just gave this like <laughs> sound just like, just like that. Just like that coming from your brakes and so it put me into panic mode i thought something was gonna be wrong with my pickup but thank goodness it was just a rock has that ever happened to you apparently this has happened to quite a few people a rock gets stuck in there and you panic until you realize how simple of a fix it is you just take the wheel off you jack it up you take the wheel off and you just grab like a pointy screwdriver or something and you just flick it out of there that's all it was so thank goodness didn't cost me any money to fix it, and I was able to fix it myself, like a man. Right, Chevy? He says right. Trust me. Don't look at me like that. See you over there. They don't believe me. I fixed it myself. Guys. Chevy, you don't think I can fix anything? You said yourself you're not a mechanic doesn't mean I can't fix anything. I'm handy. I'm a handy man. The wife don't find me handsome. She should at least find me handy, right? No? None of you guys? 
Well, you, you believe me, right? It happened. Anyways, my phone is dinging over there. I have to attend to that, apparently. Just wanted to close this up and say thanks for watching. We had a fun trip into Ontario. Uh, Big Blue 42 treated us very well. Hopefully we can have another trip in her soon. That was, that was a lot of fun. Beautiful truck. Maybe next time they'll have uh, one of their... Uh, they have one of the new Volvos. The big... What is it? A VL, VN680 or 6 whatever. They have one of the brand new ones. Uh, they have a couple of them on the fleet. I think there's drivers in them though. Maybe we'll be sent out in one of those one day. We can try that out. Because I hear the new Volvos are also like a condo on wheels. And we could give it an honest comparison. I am biased. Obviously I... I I will always pick the Kenworth over Volvo. But that's just me. Maybe you're different. Maybe you like Volvo more than Kenworth. Hey, I may not understand you, but we can still be friends, right? I wouldn't mind uh, seeing it and seeing what it's all about. I hear they're pretty nice. So thanks for watching. Hit the like button if you haven't already. Helps me out a lot, and I'll see you tomorrow.